Okay, welcome team. How are we doing? I'm really excited to to do this first kind of live, or it's not live. Um, this first little video um chat with with you all as the founding members of this school community. And you know, I've got big plans. Let's see if I execute on them. Let's see if we're able to grow the community. Um, I really hope that we are. Next target is 100. So we've got 10. Next target is 100. If you're watching this and we've already got 100, then we've nailed it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to jump in with these very short kind of snippets around different aspects that, that I've sourced from you guys, things that you want to know about. Um, lots of chat around nutrition, and it's probably a big focus of all the bits that I, that I talk about uh, with my current clients. And it's more of a focus for me as I, as I sort of get older. And I think it's the biggest lever that we've got in health and fitness by far. Although as young men, I don't think we like to admit that. <laughs> so it's something that we really need to put our focus on. We know it's really important. And I just want to give you what works for me, what's really worked well for the guys that I've coached um, without any of the fluff, basically. So without further ado, I'll try and keep this as short and sweet. This is only supposed to be a single nugget. Uh, lots more to come. Uh, I've written this guide. Some of you hopefully would have read it. Some of you may not. It, it will be up on the school site um, in the learning area as well. So you should be able to find it there um, soon as. Um, have, have a read through. Hopefully the way I've written it is in engaging enough for you and you can, you can make sense of it. And, and you know, I welcome any feedback. Obviously, this is version one draft that we're looking at. So uh, the purpose of this guide is to try to convey how I view the world of nutrition, uh, which is simple strategies that work uh, with most people. I'm going to say all people, but most people. Okay, so I'm not interested in your niche uh, diet, your fad diets, or your dogmatic approaches. Um, and I, I allude to that in some of the sort of text at the top of the document. Um, it's just the, the nuts and bolts, really. And at the bottom, I've laid out a five-step process, uh, which I think works really well um, to build a system around, okay? Uh and I want to go much deeper than that in these conversations, but let's start with uh, what I think is, is a key focus for anyone who's struggling with their nutrition. And if you're not ticking this, then this is what you need to start ticking as a priority, okay, to see some results. So uh, let's jump down, go away and read this, but let's just highlight a couple of pages today um, that I, want, I think are, are, are really important. And I'll be mindful not to talk about things that are hiding in my, my headspace. So I think probably should start here with this this section. So the science fundamentals one pager. So I think it's, it's probably just worth trying to convey some of these uh, complex systems that I've tried to simplify uh, down to you. So energy balance um, is about understanding how much we're expending in terms of energy, in terms of fueling our body and, and, and allowing us, ourselves to produce enough energy so we're able to do the things that we want to do uh, versus how much energy how much food we're eating so that that's where we are sounds pretty good pretty straightforward and when people talk about calories um it's a measure of energy okay it's, it's the amount of energy required to boil a liter of water off the top of my head so energy balance is, is one thing to think about satiety i think is another really important factor if we can't allow ourselves to feel full then i think we're always going to be fighting a massive psychological battle uh, which we will lose hands down okay because the brain outthink us and outwit us and we'll slide down a very slippery slope to wanting things because we're hungry all the time um so that's again something to really really think about um uh, it complex hormone uh synthesis and, and process that goes on in, in order to regulate hunger uh one of the key things that i think is really really important is volume of food is really uh, a, a really good um way to signal some of these satiety some of these hunger signaling hormones to sort of tell your body that you are full so you know the the way that you can explain that is eating bulky nutritionally dense food that are low energy so low calorie food and you know classically everyone says eat lots of fruit and veg it ticks both those boxes okay um won't talk about fiber today i'll come on to that in another session but you know, we can eat bulky veg, bulky fruit. Uh, it's going to fill up our stomachs, which will make us feel less hungry, make us feel full. Actually, that's what we're trying to do. Okay. So that's, again, something to really think about. And I think it's something, it's a trap that I fall into, which is, you know, if I'm trying to diet down for whatever reason, 
then I'll, I, you know, you, you just go to eating less. And usually the logical jump, which isn't the right thing to do, but it's a logical jump we made. That means eating smaller portions, which creates this negative feedback loop because you think, well, I'm eating less. That's shit. Uh, I want to eat more because that makes me happy. And that is linked to happiness. Actually, having a full belly uh, releases lots of happy hormones. So uh, lots going on here. Um, energy balance is, is, is obviously a huge factor. Being full and eating large meals, I think, is really important. It's maybe something that gets overlooked. Uh, so something definitely to think about. And I'm, I'm an advocate of eating big meals. You know, one of the sort of strap line taglines um, is eat more uh, to drop fat because you need to feel full. So you need to find a way to do that. Coming to talk to tactics on, a, on, a, on another session, I'm just trying to uh, signpost some things to think about and make sure you're ticking off. Energy balance, obviously one. Satiety, feeling full and eating proper sized meals is two. Uh, and the last one I wanted to touch on is something that you maybe haven't heard about, which is protein, right? protein leverage theory. So uh, it's a theory that if you're not getting substantial protein, enough protein from a psychological perspective, not just a survival perspective, then you're going to try to fill up um, on any other food. So if we look at our big three food groups, we've got protein, carbohydrates, and fats. If the, the protein's not being hit, then you'll seek uh, to meet these demands these sort of chemical demands, if you like, by eating lots of other things. So when you find yourself nibbling uh, on lots of crisps and nuts and toast and biscuits and whatever that might be, because you're always quite, quite hungry, very much think about how much protein have I had? Do I ha Have I met my target for protein for the day? And that's a really good way to think about the tactics of it as well, which is start with protein. I'm going to hit some protein targets early on in the day before... Uh, the afternoon kicks in because that's a real sink time for me and I start cracking open the biscuits or whatever's in the office, etc. So Protein Every Series is kind of the, the title from a scientific perspective and you can go away and read about that if you want to. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Suffice to say, the best way to approach uh, feeling full, being full and not seeking lots and lots of additional calories if you want to drop fat is to ensure you're hitting a protein target. Okay, um, and try and do that as early on in the day as, as possible because then you're going to avoid this this negative feedback loop that the protein leverage theory or missing that protein the, the component here is is going to give you. So if you're not if you're not doing it, then you're going to get fall foul of that trap. Um, yeah, so that that's what I wanted to touch on there. So um, you know, protein requirements are met, irrespective of calories, then we will seek to top up, top up, top up, top up, and you create a never ending loop. And so how much protein? Let's dive into that very, very quickly. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that. So uh, personally, for a long, long time, I didn't get this right. And as soon as I started getting this right, as soon as I started getting adequate protein, I'll talk about what that is in a second, I really saw muscle gain um, from the training that I did. And I didn't see fat gain. Okay, so obviously, if you're growing your muscle, then... You're going to look better anyway, which is a goal in, in, in lots of terms. But, um, but you're not going to, you know, you can you can eat more protein without the risk of adding more fat. Again, that's another really powerful way to think about this. Yeah, you can pound the pound the protein in. It's not going to get converted into the same energy stores that fat and carbohydrates do. Uh, believe it or not, it just it's it's much more thermodynamic, so it gets burnt um, first. As a as and, and gets pushed into those muscles for for development, or you, you just don't keep hold of it because it's uh, your body's always trying to be efficient. You know, mind, mindful. Uh, so your body's always trying to be efficient, and will store what's easy to store. Protein isn't easy to store. There is a mechanism for doing it, but it's not what the go to one is. So uh, again, that's why you can eat lots and lots of protein, and you know, you're all good. So how much? Um, lots of people will tell you lots of different things here. One point seven, zero point seven to one point two grams per uh, body weight per pound per per pound of body weight. 
uh, mashed it up to that, which, which equates to 1.6 to 2.6 grams per kilo. Now, that sounds like a lot. Um, and it's, you know, this rough rule that we hear in, in the sort of the bro science world, which is one gram per pound, um, which actually it does work really well for most people. Um, if you have a lot of fat to lose, then you can moderate that protein uh, to then balance, keep keep your cal- total calories down, although it's not too much of a concern. Um, and we can talk about that one-to-one if you want to. Uh, you can do that in your target weight. So if you're, if you're at, say, uh, 100 kilos and you want to get to 80 kilos, then you can use the 80 number to multiply uh, by 1.6, for example, or 2 uh, to give you that number. Uh, example here, so... Um, I'm 85, no, about 83 kilos, so I try and hit that target of 100, it says 187 there, so I'll, I'll, yeah, and to be honest with you, that is hard, that is hard, and it's something I've had to push towards, and often I'm not hitting that target, but I would say, if you look into the literature, and you look into these numbers, if you're at the lower end, that's still a good amount of protein, so we need to start building patterns in our life to ensure that we're getting big boluses of protein breakfast 40 50 grams can we do that how can we start to train ourselves to do that lunch boom 30 40 50 grams of protein we don't want to be getting into a situation at the end of the day where you're like yeah i had two croissants um and a cheese sandwich so that's about fuck all protein maybe like five ten grams um so i've now got a hundred and 50 grams of protein to get in the next two hours and you know i'm gonna eat myself out of house at home to do that supplements protein powders i think it can be really ha- helpful and it's, it's one of the only supplements that i think are, is worth thinking about here um and yeah and, and you know to, to put icing on this i know we're at 12 minutes i'm trying to try and cut it short but to put an icing on this whole conversation we are trying to build muscle mass okay i don't care what your goals are if you one of your goals is longevity and being healthy, then the organ that you want to develop and can develop because hey, it's it's hard to develop the heart organ um, without doing lots and lots of running um, or the liver organ. How do we get our spleen to be a little bit smaller? We can't really do that. But muscle mass, we can pull that lever. I'm not going to say it's easy to add muscle mass once you hear forty, fifty, and onwards. However. It should be a focus. And I'll talk about specifics of muscle building. Uh, it's not for this session, but having adequate protein or surplus protein to your survival needs is the only way you're going to build that muscle. So you need to be thinking about protein intake. I'm going to stop here. I've talked a lot. If there anything hasn't been clear or you want more information, then hit me up in the comments. I'm happy to rework any of this information, go over it again and again and again. Uh, really drill into some of the tactics, some of the tools, some of the errors, etc. So let me know what's going on. Um, happy that I've done the first one of these and hopefully it wasn't too waffly. I uh, appreciate your support. I appreciate your engagement in the group. Thank you all very much for being part of this journey. It's really important to me to to try to get these messages out there and try to support and build a community around guys that actually want to uh, live a healthy life and you know want to be part of something that, that is valuable and, and, and important and can actually be part of a community where they can help other guys as well because I think that's really important and you know if I look at what's going on in the world I think we need to we need to do more of this sort of connection and and community stuff to support each other because I think tough times ahead and some some challenges in our lives uh, that that perhaps we haven't had or not even our parents had anyway let's say books